off, we are recording today's uh, webinar, uh, workshop, uh, and it will be available on YouTube. And I will send out the YouTube link to all everyone who registered, whether they uh, actually joined us or not, so that they can see. Uh, today's workshop is part of the Small Business Month series that the Chamber, in conjunction with George's River Council, uh, and the support as well of the New South Wales government is providing uh, during Small Business Month. Uh, we've already had Mark McCrindle's uh, workshop, which was absolutely fantastic. Uh, last week we had Sylvia de Ritter, which was uh, also fantastic. Um, I know I personally got a lot out of Sylvia's presentation, and I'm sure we're going to get a lot out of today's, which is Tony Padua um, speaking about cash flow. This is on the theme of resilience that the Chamber has chosen as the theme for uh, Small Business Month. And next week, um, that very good looking person there <laughs> is presenting <laughs> as well, uh, which is a, it's a two hour workshop. It will probably finish in less than two hours, but it's two sided workshop next week, folks. Uh, business to business and business to consumer. So without any further ado, I'm going to stop my screen share and hand it over to Tony who can light up his slides. I'll introduce Tony while he's doing that for you. Um, Tony Badua has 20 years experience, eight of them in a CFO financial controller capacity in various finance roles. And those give him the opportunity to set a strategic direction, assist CEOs and boards with financial and commercial analysis that ranges across entire businesses. Tony's had responsibility for overseeing the full finance function responsible for IT systems and admin and head office administration, uh, head office operations as well. So Tony comes to us today with a unique set of skills and experience across a diverse range of industries and organisations, both in size and in culture, which gives him the necessary tools required for operating and assisting any business across varying sectors. Tony's skill sets include establishing and reconstructing finance departments, improving cash flow, which is very important at this day and age, forecasting and management, uh, and efficient systems re-engineering, amongst many others. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to hand you over to Tony Badua to uh, take control of the screen and the slide set. Thank you, Trevor. Thank you very much for the introduction. Um, I didn't realize you write so much. <laughs> or did I write that? Thank you for that. Um, guys, thank you for all for joining us today and taking some time out. Um, I appreciate again, um, and what are you attending these workshops? The Chamber, obviously, as well, in conjunction with uh, George River Council, have run this series of workshops over over this uh, Small Business Month. And obviously, as, as Trevor has touched on, the theme here is about resilience. And obviously, you know, businesses during this tough time, being this unprecedented tough times, I should say, with current, the coronavirus and so on, you know, resilience is, is been nothing more important than we are at the moment. Not being able to get through this and get through the other side is obviously what we all want to do. And we're wishing that every business does do that. But the reality is that, you know, uh, everyone, every business during these tough times will have its own challenges. Today, obviously, we're going to focus on cash flow because cash flow itself is obviously key to any, any business survival. And, and, and it doesn't matter what business size you are, small, large, medium, we all have these challenges in regards to cash flow at some point in, in the business life cycle. Whether you're at startup stage, whether you're at the growth stage, each one of them presents their own challenges. So, you know, we'll start today's meeting. Obviously, the obvious question is why is cash flow so important? Well, as I, we've all heard the terminology, cash is key. And obviously, without cash in the bank, without the bank balance being healthy, we can't operate a business uh, to its full potential. And obviously, in some instances, can't survive. So it's important. And, and statistically, if, 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 you, if, you, if you look at the data, Everybody knows most, the biggest, one of the biggest reasons a business fails is in its first five years, apart from obviously, you know, market challenges and, and, and the actual model itself, is cash flow. You know, if people can have a great idea and it can be the biggest concept and the, the freshest concept in town, but if there isn't a sufficient cash flow coming through, then, you know, the rate of survival, it, it, you know, it, 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 it diminishes quite significantly. So cash flow for those obviously, and again, today's 
and let me just full circle back and say that today's presentation is is quite a general one, and and obviously you know everybody's cash flow model and requirements are different subject to their business environment. So feel free, guys, during the course of this uh, presentation, you know, take some notes and ask some questions at any time, and whether it be through the personal share or whether it be obviously jumping in, that's that's fine. Do that because. Again, the topic here is, is more a general topic about what we can do and just giving you some tools that may or may you may use when we're able to deviate, uh, you know, deviate a little bit from, from what we tell you today and, and apply it to your business. So if, if, if we look at the slides, it, you know, cash flow is the money that is moving in and out of the business. So pretty obvious, isn't it? So th that statement itself is quite obvious, right? But the challenge isn't the, the, the ease of the statement, but the challenge is actually getting the money through the door. And, and today we're going to touch on some ways that we can bring, you know, bring, bring some money through the door during obviously a tough time when everybody's strapped for cash. We all know that, it, you know, knocking on doors uh, and asking people for money during times of tough, tough, you know, tough challenges and so on is not easy. So hopefully, you know, we'll be able to touch on some tips there. Starting a business, you know, dealing with cash flow issues is the most difficult when you're starting a new business. We all know that, you know, we, we all get excited. We go through the buzz of, you know, we all believe in our concept and, and, and we, want, we you know, we're excited to get to the market because we, we think it's a new big thing. And it's great. It's fantastic. That's what entrepreneurism is all about. But one of the biggest mistakes that I find people make is, and, 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 and astounding, is that they don't sit down and put together a cash flow model or even some sort of cash flow reconciliation about what they need uh, from, from, from a cash, what, what we call in the industry, a cash flow perspective. You know, you know, how much money do I need uh, to keep myself going for the first six months, even first 12 months before I get myself set up? That's very critical. That's probably what, apart from setting up the concept, that's probably one of the most important thing, you know, and sitting down and asking yourself the question, Wow, what do I need? What, what do I need to get myself through? You know, is, is there bank support? Is there, you know, the, the bank of mum and dad? Is there the bank of friends? Have I got enough funding to get me through that most crit critical stage of the business? You know, where I'm out trying to get, you know, new business through the door to generate cash flow. So that's very important. So if, if anybody out here in this, web, in this webinar today is considering who may or may not have a business or is starting, considering uh, starting a new business, Please take that time out and think about what you need, what costs you may incur, and, and, and what time you may need to be able to establish yourself. And don't, as much as we've got great enthusiasm, allow yourself as much time to burn, I'm sorry to say that, burn cash without stressing about not meeting your bills. Because it, 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 if you don't have that sound backing from the start, then I'm sorry to say that you, you're setting yourself up to, I won't use the word failure because I don't like using that, but obviously some tough times. And, and again, the first, everyone talks about the first six months and that's, it's very important. The first six months of any business is crucial for cash flow. And if you don't have enough to carry, again, if you don't have enough to carry yourself through this time, your chances for success aren't good. Suppliers, and, and, and the problem too is, is when you're starting off new, you don't have a history. You don't have a trading history. We've all been through it. Those who started a business from us, amongst us, where you know you want to get credit, you want to talk to people about you know that extra flexibility in paying your bills, and we all know that. That's so why you fill out an application form. Here's a trade application form. Give us some references. Give us some history. And most times out of ten, you know, if you're lucky, you may get approved, but. A lot of times you're finding yourself forking out money straight away to earn that goodwill with your suppliers. So uh, again, guys, I, I stress that, that that initial planning phase is very important in regards to your cash requirements. Um, because once your customer, once your suppliers start knocking and your customers aren't paying, and that's where you get the crunch. I call it the cash crunch. Where, where, you know, people are coming at you thinking, and, and the reality is the reason why people are knocking on your doors is because they haven't got confidence yet. That you're going to survive, especially when you're a new business. You've got to show them that you're you're resilient enough, and you've got to build that confidence in your suppliers as well as your customers that you're going to deliver on what you, what you say you're going to deliver on. So that's important. So it's important to plan, plan, plan at the startup phase, and then plan at the growth stage, which we'll we'll touch on in, in future slides. So if you see in the red bolds there, you've got, in, my tip is in estimating your cash flow needs for startup, include your personal living expenses. And that, that, that's important, I've underlined that. You, you still need to live. During this growth phase, you still need to live. You know, we've got mortgages to pay, school fees to pay, you know, obviously basic living expenses, guys. 
you've got to factor that into your, your, your equation because unless you're planning to live on air, then you know, you, you've got to make sure that you've got, again, enough money to keep yourself uh, going through that tough period. So um, that's one of the things I, I always encourage people is make sure that you, you've got enough to cover you. you it's almost like a, a mini break even. Do you know, what do I need to survive over the next six months uh, as a bare minimum whilst I'm establishing my new, uh, new business idea? Okay, the less you need to take from your business for personal costs, the more you can devote to your business during this crucial startup time. Again, same concept, guys. As you're building your business, you want to try to keep, and it's not easy. I'll sit here and say that, it's not easy. You, you, you're trying to sort of reinvest in the business, trying to build that solid base. So, so it's important to ensure that, you know, you've got enough covered so that you're not dipping into those, you know, that, that, those business cash flow just to sort of keep yourself floating. So that, that's very important too. Just in that startup phase is get your processes right, get your concept right, but more importantly, get your cash flow right. So that's, that, that, that's very important, guys. And, 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 if, and if you find that, you know, there's going to be a cash burn, ask yourself the question, am I ready to start this business? It's, it's, it's a tough question, but it's a brave question. Am I, is it the right time to start? Am I really being honest with myself about, um, you know, having the right sort of cash flow to be able to keep me going? And if, if, and if, it's, if the answer to that question is, I can wait a couple more months, then that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that, guys, because your crucial stage, the startup stage, is the most important start of any business. Okay, tips for managing your cash flow. Uh, and again, I, I, these, are, these are very broad, uh, these are very broad categories, but I think in some, in some way they do, they do sort of um, relate to most businesses. <laughs> Uh, you know, you're controlling your inventory. You know, not every business has inventory, but we'll touch on that in a later slide. Uh, making sure, you know, having too much inventory in a cash flow. You know, I, I'm, I'm going to give you a personal anecdote. When I, when I started up a retail business, I look back now and, and, and it started off successfully, but then we hit a credit crunch because we opened up with the GFC. And one of the reasons when I was, and it's funny, when I was closing up the business, the amount of stock that I had left was just phenomenal. And I thought to myself, I think I know what I went wrong. I, I, I bought too much stock when I first started and obviously it was sitting on the shelf. It, you know, and, and, and that's something we'll touch on in a later slide, but please make sure that you don't oversupply yourself. Don't, over, don't overstock yourself too much because again, you know, turning, turning your inventory over is turning, turning it into cash, two different things. So that's, that's important to, to ensure. Um, a tough one, ending <laughs> like any relationship, if it's not working, you've got to be brave enough and ask a question you know, and make that decision. When is the time to end this relationship? You know, is this, is this business, uh, is this customer, uh, you know, bringing me down? Is he, you know, it's one thing to, we all want to generate customers. We all want to generate a client base, but no use having a client that you're investing all your time in, but isn't paying you or, or he's dragging the relationship out. Believe it or not, that's just as important, just as dangerous to the business as, as in having cash there. Is no use in, uh, being distracted and investing all your time in this client if really it's, it's a one way street. So that's also a very important tip is that, you know, have a look at the client base, make sure they're working for you, and have that tough conversation with your client. Say, hey guys, you know, I'm loving working with you guys. It's great, and I appreciate your, your, your clientele. But you know, we also need to get paid. And, 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 and even if, if it's a little bit, even if you sit down and put together a payment plan with them, uh, if that doesn't work, well, then you've kind of got to ask yourself the question: Is it worth it? I know it's a tough one, but it's one that needs to be asked. And obviously, more importantly, collecting your collecting your money. You know, knocking on doors being there in front of your client, saying to them, you know, hey guys, um, your 30 days, your 40 day terms, you, you're dragging out to 60 days. You've got to stay on top of your receivables, especially during times like this. And I know, you know, everybody's tight for cash at, at, during these kind of unprecedented times, but you know what, the unprecedented times are gonna finish. This, this, this problem will still be around even post COVID where, you know, if your, your receivables are building out to 45 and, and 60 days and 90 days in some instances, then 
that's that in itself is a serious problem and can create uh, quite uh, quite a um, a, quite a credit crunch as well down the track or cash crunch down the track. And, and also, more importantly, the longer I find you allow a debt to sit on your balance sheet or in your debtors, the, the harder it is to collect, believe it or not. And most times out of 10, you're going to get that whole pushback of what did you do to deliver that invoice? You get, you get every trick in the book thrown at you. So it's very important, guys, to stay on, on top of your receivables. Okay. Lease don't buy. I get this question all the time. Should I buy? Should I lease? You know, what's the right thing to do? And it's a good question because not, this type of approach you buy, you take to in regards to your, you know, you're buying your assets or your, or your, you know, your, your, your startup for sort of facility is important because leasing has its good points and it has its bad points. But one of its big points is cash flow. You know, instead of outlaying a massive amount of capital, uh, going out and leasing, if you can, obviously, uh, get leasing facility, it'd be great because paying in increments, paying in instalments is a lot easier on your cash flow than it is to um, to sort of, um, you know, go out there and fork, fork out, you know, a huge amount of uh, capital outlay at a time when really, especially if you're in a startup phase, in a startup phase, I'll, I'll, I'll I would recommend it, but I know that the challenge will be getting that credit facility in place, unless obviously you know you've got a good banker who obviously work with you to, to be able to establish that. In a growth phase, I highly recommend this to people. I say to everyone, if you if you've got a massive project or or a new project coming on board or a new client that you know you've got to outlay some cash flow, uh, some some capital for in order to establish that project, then I, I highly recommend sitting down with your bank and saying, hey guys. Look, um, you know, all your, all your finance, I shouldn't just say bank, but your finance and say, hey guys, um, here's a new project. We're going through a great bank growth phase. What can we do in regards to a revolving facility or some sort of facility that will allow us to, 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 to transition through this growth phase? Uh, and more importantly, guys, depending on what you pick, whether it's a lease or a finance, it's tax deductible. That's the beauty of it. It's you know if if it's a finance lease, you, you know you're talking about you know the interest expect portion of it, or if it's an operating lease, you, you know you're getting the, the the full deduction. That's that 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 that's that's another um, benefit to, to leasing, I find. You know, and obviously you know you've got the depreciation expense to come out of that as well as a tax deduction. They're just little things. Obviously, people turn around. I, I had this question last week or so, and they say, "Well, what about with the with the government and the budget that's been announced?" I mean, it's fantastic. You know being able to straight right off your asset, you know, that you purchase, you know, in that financial year up until 2022. It's a great initiative if you have the cash to do that. And if you have the cash to be able to, to fork out to do that, fantastic. Don't lease, buy. But let's be honest, guys, how many people in this day and age have that excess cash flow to be able to buy? So, um, so yeah, so I, I do highly encourage leasing subject to where, you are in your business life cycle, and more importantly, what your requirements are in regards to obviously, you know, uh, uh, inventory, uh, not inventory, or in assets and, and, and asset sort of um, items that you may need for help, helping you grow the business. Is there any questions anyone would like to sort of jump in and ask before I move on to the next, in, 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 in specific to what we've talked about so far? Or we'll just continue? Hi. Tony, hey, is, is George here? Hi, George. Um, how are you? Uh, um, good, thanks. Um, just if I, um, I'm a business banker at CBA, actually, and I do have customers asking this type of conversations, and this is what I do as part of my daily job. Fantastic. One of the questions I, I did have out of my customers, right? So I do, because I, I do give some tips to my customers as much as I can, so I do know that always talking is a big issue, but how much is too much stock? Yeah, good question. And, 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 and there's a couple of, without getting too technical, and it's something, you, there's, a, there's, there's a, a ratio called inventory turnover ratio, which measures the amount of time it takes for you to turn over your inventory. And, and, and the reality is, if it's taking you between 30 to 45, and, and again, the ratio differs depending on your industry, you know, because the sales cycle is different for every business and every different industry. But really, if you're not turning over on a general basis, I understand it's between 30 to 45 days, again, subject to your business model, then I'd be questioning that because 
And again, I'll give you an example. I've got a client who's a tobacconist, and he, prior to, it is from Melbourne, and prior to the shutdown, he was saying to me, oh, Tony, the, you know, business is going really well, but I, can't, I don't know where my cash is. And literally, this is a, 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 a real life scenario here. He said to me, oh, you know, I've, I don't know where the money is, you know, the, you know, there's customers there and, you know, you've seen my bank account and you've seen this, what, what's going on? And I said to him, your sales are pretty good, which is good, you know, you, you, I can see all that kind. I said to him, have you done a stock take lately? He goes, yeah, I did a stock take lately. Yeah, you know what? Oh, mate, the shop is pumping, to use his words. I said, what do you mean it's a pumping? He goes, mate, the shelves are full of inventory. I'm full to the brim. I go, well, there's your problem. He goes, what do you mean? I said to him, how much stock is on the shelf? He said, oh, mate, it's, the, the shop's overloaded. I, I, mean, I won't be buying it. I said, there's your problem. I said to him, what kind of stock did you buy? Is it moving quickly? Is it, what type of lines are moving? He said, oh, yeah, some are moving slower than, than others and some are moving quicker. I said, oh, there's your problem. And it worked out without sort of getting into details. But he, he had something close between about $150,000 to $200,000 worth of stock sitting on the shelf. There is your answer. Too much stock can be too it can be so detrimental to the business. So, really, if, if we're talking between thirty to forty-five days to inventory turnover. You should be turning stock over, and if it's not and it's sitting on your shelf, then that's a problem because you know at some point, at some point, your supplier is going to be knocking on the door asking for you to pay for that if you if you're on credit terms, and if you forked out cash for it, that's even worse because you basically. You've emptied your bank account and you're waiting, you're hoping that it's going to move quickly so you can replenish it. So, yeah, to answer your question, George, between 30 to 45 days, I think, is, 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 is normal to be turning over inventory. Sure. Um, sure. Thank you so much. Thanks, Tony. My pleasure. Okay, next slide. Now you customers. The whole question about, you know, and when you're working with it, we all get excited. We want to, you know, we want to, we want to bring clients on. We want, we want to build that CRM base. We want to build that customer base because that's what's going to make our business successful. And it's true. It's true. But before we start offering discounts, before we start bringing clients on board, you need to do your due diligence. You need to know your customer. You know, ask the, ask the questions, you know, uh, do the credit checks, you know, uh, get, get, get a couple of references, get them to fill out a trade form, make sure that the guy that you're getting into business with has a solid backing because whilst there's always the honeymoon stage where we, you know the customer comes on board and you're investing all your time and energy, if you haven't asked these questions at the beginning of the relationship, then it gets tougher to ask the questions during the relationship and once you're all invested. So do the right checks, guys. Do the right credit checks. You know, ask the right questions in regards to, you know, what your customer does. You know, we're not asking for their tax returns. We're not asking for your tax returns. I'm not asking you to, you know, get a notice of assessment. And I, I know some customers are asking for that, believe, uh, believe it or not. Some businesses are doing that. But you just got to be able to make sure that, you know, who you're dealing with is in a position to be able to pay their bills, be able to, you know, there's no little sort of skeletons in the background. And once you've crossed that stage, guys, then you start thinking about incentives. You know, you know, everybody loves an incentive, yeah? That's the first opening line you see on the slide. You know, and if you offer your customers a discount, if they pay the bill ahead of the time, you're creating that win-win situation. Uh, and and I, I always encourage people to do the discounting. There's nothing wrong with that. But I always say, don't give away the farm. Just make sure that you're giving enough discount to incentivize your customers to be able to pay on time and getting cash into the door. Because let's be honest, getting cash to the door early is is, is gonna help. And it's also gonna uh, create that solid base for you going forward. But, you know, I always say to people, offer discounts without giving away the farm. That's very important. So discounting isn't dead. And I know a lot of people saying, oh, you know, during tough times, you don't, you, you know, you shouldn't be discounting. You don't, you don't, your margin's already tight as it is. And I, and I say to them, well, that's true. I agree with you, but especially now with when you look at COVID, where you know I, I do a lot of debt collection for people, and, and, and you see it. You know there is a bit of a tight cash credit, uh, uh, tightening of credit and cash, and it's hard. And if you're not knocking on doors every day or talking to your customers, they do forget about you, or they'll, they'll they won't prioritize you. So you've got to give them a reason to prioritize you, to be able to say to you, you know, hey guys, if you know if you if you pay by direct debit, um, you know you get a five percent discount. 
hypothetically, or if you pay on time next seven days or next 14 days, you know, you can get another 20, you know, you get an extra additional 5% or, or 2% discount. Before you offer a discount, guys, just make sure you can afford it too, and make sure your margins can, in, can, can handle it and make sure that your pricing can handle that. But uh, during times of now, don't be scared to, to, to do that. Don't be scared to give away a little bit to get some back, I say to people. Um, also, just going back to uh, conducting customer checks, if a customer doesn't want to pay, and I, say, I shouldn't say cash, but doesn't want to be able to, uh, doesn't, or it, it doesn't want to be able to, um, what's the word, is, is being a little bit, I suppose, elusive or avoiding in regards to credit checks or in regards to, you know, uh, putting forward something that's going to obviously build that confidence that they're going to be able to pay their bills, then I, 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 that to me is a red flag. That to me is a, is a red flag that, you know, they could be customer shopping themselves because they've got debts that they've built up. That's something I see a lot of guys, especially during now where, you know, a lot of businesses are building up, uh, uh, you know, debt with one supplier and then jumping to another supplier. So now it's very important during this time and obviously going forward post corona is to ensure that people's credit history or, 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 or status is good and there's a lot of services out there creditor watch a lot of subscription um, services that uh, you know offer this kind of service of, 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 of checking up on customers or 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 giving information about customers who may be reported for, for bad you know credit history and so on do that guys do that check it's very important once you know that the guy that you're dealing with is is good to is good for for, for paying his bills then fine great we, 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 that's one risk that's one risk mitigated straight away and as badly as you might want the sale guys late payments will hurt your business again i, I emphasize that now you're just having a customer that you know you're sending out bills of 10 15 grand a month and you're really excited because you know he's a big client but he's not paying you that big client is taking up a lot of your time and getting you to invest a lot of your time in his business, making his business successful. Well then that's great. But remember that time is taken away from you generating other business or, 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 or even taking away your focus on your business because you're so invested in this big client. So mate, again, I ask, I tell people this, don't be scared to, to have that conversation. If you're getting a feel that, you know, you've issued the first invoice and you're now moving on to the second invoice, uh, in second months of invoicing and you're not seeing any, any, any commitment to pay, I would be having that conversation and I would be having it quickly because once you get out to second and third invoice uh, being outstanding, then already, already now you, you've gotten yourself into a situation where you're so invested that, you know, you can't get out or it, if things go pear shape, you know, you're exposed, the business is exposed. And that's the last thing you want to be doing, especially, and, and this, and this is, is very specific, not just to startups, in any phase of any business, whether you're in the growth phase or in the maturity phase, it doesn't matter. If your debt is a building, guys, it, it doesn't matter who you are, it impacts on your cash flow in some way. So it's, it's very important, guys, keep your eye on, how long your customer or your behavior of your customer and their and, and the and the ability or their commitment to pay and if, if you're seeing it then please please ask uh, don't be scared to say hey guys what's going on here and look and guys if and if you get that pushback of oh you know uh, you know what's going on or that question of loyalty and so on to me that's all smoke and mirrors you know in the end bills need to be paid you know and, and, and you don't want to be sort of building up that that whole um, debtors, debtors manager, debtors aging report to 30, 45, 90 days because again, the harder it grows, the, the, the bigger the debtor grows, that the harder it is to collect for whatever. Or more importantly, you get into a situation where you start getting drip fed. And that's what is better than nothing is not an ideal situation. Any questions so far, guys, before I move on to obviously going back to focusing on inventory a bit? Hi Tony, it's Carlos, how are you? Good Carlos, how are you? Not too bad mate, you you, you obviously know uh, my business inside out, I've got a uh, wholesaler, my retail uh, side of the business um, and an online presence as well as leasing equipment. What what would be the, is there a ratio for credit risk to revenue? That, is there an ideal ratio for the two? Yeah, yeah there is and, and again uh, there's such a thing as 
It's not debt to revenue. It's more, uh, it's called, there's a couple of ratios you can look at. You can obviously look at your debt to equity ratio. You look at, there's a couple of ratios to look at. The way I see it, guys, is you, you, you don't want to be sitting at, ideally, I always say to people, if you, you know, your debt to revenue could be, and, and again, it's every business is different, and I'm just, uh, this is a general comment here, but I, I, I would be comfortable between, say, zero to, Zero to ten percent is ideal, you know. If you get levels to your revenue, um, anything greater than, to me, from my perspective, from my risk appetite, anything greater than fifteen to twenty percent, to me, is it, it, a bit of a worry, to be honest, um, Carlos. Because a, you're eating into your margins with interest expenses and so on, and more importantly, um, if if if, if your business is is heavily geared to debt, then you end up getting into a spinning wheel, sort of chasing your mouse trap sort of scenario, if you want to call it, where you're just constantly, you know, running to create more revenue to cover your more debt. And that's not what you want. You don't want to be in that situation, Carlos. So, yeah, look, again, it depends to your risk appetite. But for me, zero to 10% is not, not a bad thing. Yep. Okay. Thank you very much. My pleasure. All right, back back to the and again, I know that every business doesn't have inventory, but I, 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 I'm focusing on inventory because uh, it's one of those things where people think a, a heavily stocked warehouse or a heavily stocked uh, shop front, you know, it, 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 it shows it shows that you're, you're you're in the game or you you know you're doing really you know you've got everything you need for the customer. But these days, with, 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 with the way logistics works, and, and, and you know, whether it be just-in-time stock or whether it be you know, uh, having a good supplier that can deliver stock within a certain period of time, it makes a big difference to having the actual stock sitting on your shelf. So always take inventory, always take and check of your inventory. You know, and when I say that, it doesn't have to be a full-blown stock take every month, but every month, just have a look. Have a look at what's moving. You know, these days, a lot of the retail FPOS systems that you have or, or in, you know, reporting systems, and internal management reporting systems that you have, depending on how you look at it, all have some sort of inventory control system in place where they might be telling you what type of product line is moving better than others, what type of, you know, what, which stock line is, is, is doing well. All those kind of things you should be analysing there, guys. Uh, software systems are putting those in place for a reason to assist you to manage your business. So if you if you say at the end of the month as part of your month end procedure or review of your business, take stock, make a list of uh, those goods that you buy that aren't moving at the same place pace as other products. Discount them if you think that well, get them off the stock. It, it's better to be generating some revenue than no revenue. I think you all agree with that. You know, bad stock lines tie up a lot of your, if they're tying up a lot of your cash flow, that's going to hurt and that's going to hurt well. So, you know, if you're seeing busy, if you're looking at, if you're seeing stock lines that are not moving over that 30, 45 day period or whatever, for whatever reason, then you've got to ask yourself, A, is there a popular line? And if it's not, then move it, move it as quickly as possible and don't stock it anymore. You know what I mean? And, and it's important because the longer it stays, the more, the more it's going to hurt your business long term. Inventory is one, and like I said, to, back to my point, inventory is one of the largest business expenses you might encounter apart from labor, believe it or not, because, you know, in the end, depending on what type of business, you know, you need inventory to make your profit. We know that it's, it's simple. There's not, it's not, you know, in layman terms, we need to, if you're selling, if you're a product-based business and you need product to sell, we know that. And if you're service-based business, well, you, your stock is you. You know what I mean? You, it's a different sort of scenario there. Uh, you know, invent, investing more time in, than you should in a business that, in, in a customer that's not paying, that's a different model. But when you've got physical stock inventory, always, always carefully consider which products sell well and which have hard time turning over. Take a look at your sales patterns, guys. See when your business or, uh, or non-busy, uh, your busy or your non-busy period times are, and order inventory accordingly. So I always say to people, again, using that tobacco example, tobacco shop example, I said to him in the conversation, "Well, I'll, I don't want to see any more invoices coming through until I see that stock level coming down. Because what's the if, if, if I've just invested 150 grand in stock, but then I've still got to buy stock on a weekly basis, you know, you've done something wrong there." in my opinion, because it, it, to me, I always say to business with, with, with inventory levels is 
try and understand your business to the point or your customers' behaviors and how that's reflecting in your sales figures. And if, if you're seeing a slowing down or, or for whatever reason, or you've got a, you know, a slow period, then guys, assess, step back, assess what's moving and, and make decisions accordingly. That's very important um, in regards to your whole sales versus inventory uh, relationship. And if you have old inventory that you're having a hard time getting rid of, consider liquidating it. You know, any money is better money, guys. Again, I keep on saying that. You know, don't worry about the margin. Oh, you know, don't get so fixated on the margin. I, I always say to people, it's okay to, to, to take a loss on an item that, you know, isn't moving and generating a cash flow, as, which will then allow you then to invest, more importantly, in lines that are moving. Or, or new lines, or fresh lines. Think of it that way, guys. Don't think of it as, oh, I'm losing margin or I'm not sticking to my pricing model. No, 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 don't do that. If anything, liquidate and then reinvest where you think it's gonna be a lot more be beneficial to the business. Okay, the, the tough one. The one that I always get asked about. Getting customers to pay invoices on time. Not an easy one especially during tough times, guys, especially during times. And look, at any time, it's a tough time to collect money. Asking that tough question of the customer, of the client, you know, to pay your invoice on time. Before I even get you get to that conversation, there's a few things that you can do to be able to assist your cash flow. Um, even with, it's, and it comes to your behavior patterns yourself, as in you, the way you run your own business internally. Um, I'll give you an example again. I'm, I'm working with a client, a, a national company, uh, who's got biggest problems cash flow at the moment. And uh, what I saw was happening when I analysed their behaviour in the business is, you know, they, they were sending their invoices out at sporadic times of the month, you know, and expecting the business, the, the, the customer to pay them within those trading terms. Can I just say, guys, that's a fantasy. If you have a customer that's cash heavy and is able to pay you, great. But I can tell you now, guys, most people will take advantage of their credit terms. So if you're giving somebody generous credit terms, say 30 days or 40 days, it is very important to get your invoicing out immediately. And when I say immediately, guys, at the beginning of the month, you know, organize this. I know it's not easy sometimes, but organize yourself where you're sending your invoices out consistently at the beginning of every month. That way you're educating your, your clients' expectations and behaviors in the sense of controlling and telling them, hey guys, they'll know that they're going to get an invoice every month. And the first of every month or don't let it drag out within, you know, more than five days into the month because you think about it, You've already gone five days into the month. You send it out on the fifth. He gets the invoice out. He's got 30 days to pay. Yeah, 30 days. And as much as you say to somebody on your invoice, and you always have this on your invoicing, you know, 30 days from, from, from the date of billing, I can tell you now, it ain't going to happen. And it's just, it's just part of the practice. Unless you have uh, a de direct, de de uh, direct debit facility in place where customers, and I have to say, the trend, I'm finding is a lot of people are moving away from that direct debit, especially during times of cash flow. And you know straight away, guys, when a customer is 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 is, is experiencing a bit of a cash crunch or a credit crunch, when they stop that direct debit facility, it means they're controlling their own cash flow. So I'm finding there's a, a lot of, and I'm, I'm from talking to my own customers, a lot of pushback from their customers with the whole direct debit facility because. And, and, and I say to my customer, it's because they're controlling their own cash flow. You know, they, they want to make sure that they will pay you on their terms, not yours. So it's very important that point one and two go hand in hand in that, you know, send your invoices out quickly. The quicker they get out, they end up in the inbox of your customer and the, the, calendar, the, the, the clock starts ticking from there, guys. So then on come the 30, 30, um, 30 days, you know, 30, 30 days, you're in a position to say to the customer, hey, well, I've sent it out 30 days ago. How are we going? How are we going with that? And, and, and for more importantly, I want to focus on how to collect money a little bit too before I go on to the next phase. There's a few little techniques I want to give to people. When, when you're collecting money, guys, we all know the check is in the mail. We can't say check in the mail because 
checks aren't being used a lot. What, what you're finding now these days is happening is, oh, the old, I, I can't find the invoice in my inbox. Before you, or as, as you prepare to ring a customer, always, I always say to my customers, have that invoice ready. So that when you hear them say that, oh, you know, I can't find it in the system or, you know, can you send me a copy? Bang. While you're in that conversation, that invoice should be going to the inbox. Hey, sure, not a problem. I've just sent it to you now. Because they're all, we all know, they're delay tactics. And, and, and when you're collecting money, you need to be prepared for every sort of excuse in the book. Uh, you know, there's an issue with this invoice. Oh, what's the issue? Try to tackle that issue there and then. Because, again, by the time you go back and review and so on, that adds, that adds to the turnover of that invoice. And, again, if it's creeping out to 40, look, I'm, I'm always saying to people, I'm comfortable. If you've got your debtors at 35 days turnover, where people, customers are paying you within 35 days, you're doing really well. You're doing really good, actually. But, you know, always be conscious of the delay tactic. So, so offer them, offer them again, that direct to facility with a discount incentive attached to it to incentivize them to do that. You know, don't, obviously we're moving towards in a digital phase where you know, checks are, are no longer fashionable and, and, they, and they're being phased out by the treasury anyway. Um, always encourage that electronic payment because you know, with the, with the banking facility these days, within a couple of hours, it's in your bank account. So that's very important. One thing also, the next one, I, which is one of my favourites, if, if you're in that position to be able to do that, I don't know if anybody's heard of invoice financing or factoring, and I think George, being from the banking industry, I'm sure will be able to sort of uh, relate to this. I, I always encourage my invest, uh, my customers to, 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 to talk to their banker or their financing facility, not just, there's other also private uh, institute, uh, companies out there that do this, the factoring. Factoring of invoice financing is about basically in, in layman terms selling your invoice selling your invoice to a to a underwriter or, or a financer who will provide that invoice and most times out of 10 it's around that 70 to 80 percent upfront mark uh, uh up mark uh, 80 percent of your invoice upfront payment um, which effectively means they they're, they're taking a risk on you will that you will collect that money and that money usually once collected goes into a, a bank account that they then is obviously transferred to the facility. I find that invoicing, uh, I encourage it a lot because you think about it, you're getting 70% of your invoice as a minimum, 70, 80% subject to how they, you're assessed upfront. I mean, that's that's a good thing. That couldn't be that big. The only trick, the only trick or setback guys is, uh, there's always some clawbacks where if, if there's delays, a lot of uh, uh, the institutions have clawbacks or delays where if, if it drags out to, a longer period than there's certain penalties involved in in, in collecting or, or clawing back some of that money you, you, you've been given up front um, from, from your institution and and more importantly more importantly the money is available usually during within a couple of hours or at least overnight as a minimum so again that's a good way if you're you're on an invoicing a monthly invoicing cycle to have a look and discuss that option with your um with your um, with your with your institution or you know a lender of any sort uh, around that because it's it's a really good facility if you if you manage it properly uh, and, and and more importantly um, stay on top of your debtors in that sense it works really really well and if, if anybody's interested I'm I'm happy to sort of forward if you send me an email or message to forward you some names of some customers I'm, not that I'm committed or or anything I bet there's some really great lenders out there who who do actually provide this facility and provide it quite well. If you satisfy some of their their, their criteria, so feel free to send me a message or send a, a chat through the chamber a message, um, asking for some more information. Um, if you um, the next one, if that doesn't work, then you know sorry, I shouldn't be saying this out publicly, but if all this stuff doesn't work, getting your invoices out, you know, talking to your customer and so on, then I say to my customers, well, then you then have to look internally. And when I say look internally, is what have you? What are you able to pay? Uh, manage your suppliers yourself. Then, then you then sort of get on in front foot with your suppliers and say to your suppliers, "Hey guys, you know, cash flow is a bit tight at the moment. Customers aren't paying. You know, can I pay you in instalments? Can I pay you and so on? You know, build that relationship. You know, one thing I find when with when, when with, with with customers, if you if you're open and transparent and 
and say to them, hey guys, things are a little bit tight at the moment, but I can give you this much. Most times out of 10, most of you get a positive response because people just want to see commitment or at least positive uh, action towards a commitment to make some sort of uh, payment. So feel free to have that conversation if you know your, your debtors, are, it's, uh, your customers aren't paying you. Be open, okay? Be open, be transparent, be honest with your uh, suppliers and say, hey guys, um, just need a bit of help here. I can give you a couple of thousand this week, whatever it may be. Put up an installment plan. I'm the king of installment plans, I love them. I think as long as you're open and honest with, your, with, with the person you're dealing with and, and, you, and you stay committed to that plan, then it can also work in, in improving your cash flow, you know, and more importantly, it builds that trust and respect with your suppliers. Okay, the bottom line, uh, you know, cash flow, we, all, we can sit here all day and, and, and talk about it, but cash flow is, 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 is I can't emphasize how important cash flow is to your to, to, to business. Uh, if we don't have cash coming through the door, then, then, then our chances, again, I keep on saying it's a survival, it, it, it's hard, it's, it, it diminishes almost. Um, you know, it makes it harder for you to stay in business. It also affects your ability to make decisions. You know, we all know about the anxiety and, and, and I'm comfortable in talking about this. We've all experienced that anxiety of cash flow, you know, cash flow crisis, and I call it cash flow crisis anxiety. You know, uh, you know, you look at your bank account and think to yourself, wow, you know, there's nothing coming through, but there's supplies, I've got to pay bills. You know, that, that mental health uh, aspect comes into play. That then starts to cloud your judgment because your anxiety levels are up. You know, you, you start to lose focus because you know you get into a negative state. That's 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 that is real, guys. That is real. And as much as I can sit here all day and try to help or give you tips about it, the reality is it'll happen. And and, and how you manage that is very important and very critical to your business. You know, you you want to be able to be in that right space or right frame of mind. Uh, to be able to sort of review what's going wrong or what's impacting on your cash flow. You know, is it your customer service? Is it your marketplace? Is it your business model? Whatever it may be, whatever, what, feel, don't feel scared to look in before you look out. Make sure that internally your business is doing the right things. You know, is there wastage in my, in, in my spending habits? Is there, is there, um, you know, is my pricing right? Is, is, is everything right? I mean, maybe I am, you know, maybe my debt is, uh, maybe I've got nothing outstanding, but, 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 but I've still got no money in the bank. Again, you go back and you start to assess your business and go, well, why? Is it an inventory issue? Is it a pricing issue? Is it, is it, a, is it a cost control issue? They're all kind of things, guys, that have an impact on the bottom line. I call it, and, and then the things that you need to sit down with a clear head and you say to yourself, okay, take a deep breath. Let's have a look and see what, where I can start to see where those black holes in my cash flows are and, and, and start to sort of plug them or, or work on or, 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 or look at help. Don't be scared to, to uh, talk to your bank or your financial advisor and, you know, and say, hey guys, I need hand. I don't know what's happening here. I, I'm doing my best, I'm working hard, I'm trying my best. My model looks right, I just don't know. Feel free to put your hand up guys. Don't, don't see it as anything as a failure, a sign of failure, a sign of anything other than the fact that, you know, what your business could be growing and you're just not seeing something clear enough or, you know, you've got customers who, who, who aren't paying you, you know, and maybe you're not too embarrassed to ask, you might have to outsource that function. There's a lot, there's a lot, out, a lot of tools out there that can help you, you know, get yourself out of that situation. And, and if that all doesn't work, guys, then you go back and you review and update your business plan. Maybe there's something wrong in your business model that that's you know not generating enough cash flow. Again, could it be the pricing? Could it be you know a change in the market space? It could be a number of things. But the important thing is that you stay on top of it. You know there are a lot of tools out there. You know whether it be online tools or even simple spreadsheets. You know there's nothing embarrassing about having a nice little spreadsheet or whatever it works for you in this modern era, a pen and pad, and just list. You know. Uh, what you think is coming in versus what has to go out over the next two. And don't go too far out, guys, because the further you go out when you're cash flow modeling, the less the assumptions uh, stay strong. I always say to people, focus on three months, no more than six. 
it's great to have a 12 month outlook, but things do change. Be prepared that once you look longer than three to six months out into, into the market, then be prepared to assess the cash flow forecast every three months to make sure that you're, you're trending on your assumptions and the assumptions that you made three months ago are working. And if they're not, then you need to be able to, to adjust yourself and adjust yourself quickly. And, and if you don't, you know, if, you, if you're not savvy in regards to, you know, spreadsheets and so on, there's a lot of great apps out there. You know, I again, I don't push products, but, you know, Microsoft Money, you know, My Money, there's a lot of apps out there that assist you with budgeting, you know, and if, you, and if you're not comfortable, again, put your hand up and talk to your advisor, your accountant, your, and say, hey guys, I need help. I want to know where I am in, in three months time. Are we going to survive, uh, you know, the next six months? Are we going to get through this? Is there going to be a crunch? Help me out. I'm, there's no, there's no, there's nothing wrong with asking for help when when, when you, so, you yourself don't know the answers. That's very important, guys. With cash flow management, if you can't manage your cash flow, you're not good with money. Put your hand up and admit it. It's nothing wrong with that because there's a lot of good tools and help out there that will help you sort of improve your cash flow. I know we're coming close to now. I want to uh, close to the workshop. I want to give you guys an opportunity to ask some questions, and I can see some questions have come through. Um, some of the key takeaways from today before we go to questions are, um, it doesn't matter how profitable your business is, you know, if your debts or your bad debts are mounting, guys, um, that's going to have a serious impact on your business. So I always say, stay on top of your debtors, stay on top of your customers, making sure that there's constant contact with them, making sure that, you know, uh, they know you're there, you know, make sure that, you know, once you delivered on your products or your service, then that invoice goes out, then you follow that process diligently and make sure that you stay on top of it. That's very important. You know, to gain control of your cash flow, consider implementing new policies such as offering discounts. Again, we've touched on that, you know, uh, to your customers who pay early, forming a, a buying cooperative with other businesses, again, within your industry, if you've got that sort of relationship, um, have that conversation with them. Say to them, hey guys, you know, it, it, and every industry is different. Some people are, you know, there's, some industries are closed, but I'm finding a lot of also, especially for example, in some of the waste industry, some of the bigger industries, they actually do talk to each other, believe it or not. And they do sit down, they sometimes do have coffees and they talk, uh, you know, they shoot breeze, they talk, they talk shop about what's happening in the industry. That's very important, guys. Strike up relationships with, you know, your, your competitors are your competitors, but they're also human too, you know. And, and if they're willing to have that coffee with you and have that relationship with you, have a chat and find out what's going on, you know, what's how they're experiencing things. And, and, and the amount of gossip you can get out of, you know, potential customers and suppliers is is nothing short of, um, of, of, um, is, of, of helpful, you know. So, you know, stay on top of, don't, don't, and I'm going to be brutal with this actually, guys. If you see a problem, guys, don't bury your head. Or don't don't walk away from it. Face it. And when I say face it, sit down and analyze it. Talk to people. Get help. Talk to the right people. Talk to um, uh, anybody that you know you feel will, will offer you that assistance. There is always a solution to a problem. It may not always be a positive one. It may you know it, it may take long longer than you want. But the, but the reality is. Cash flow is important and it's probably one of the most important parts of your business along with growing your top line. Because in the end, cash is king. Simple as that. And if you don't have it in the bank account, then you're unable to survive long term. Um, and on that note, guys, I thank you for your time today and, and, and I open the floor to any questions that you will, you want to ask and, 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 and feel free. If you, if you don't want to ask any questions now, feel free to send some, you know, send me a message, or an email, whatever. I'm happy to you know, have a chat. No obligations. If you think there's some stuff that you want to focus on, more than happy to do that. Tony, thank you. And uh, folks, I'll, at the end of today, I'll be sending out a number of things in an email to everyone. It will have a link to a video of today's um, presentation. So you can watch the, the meeting on uh, via our YouTube channel. Uh, it will include a link to a survey form that we'd like you to fill out, please, because we need to let the New South Wales State Government know um, how effective uh, all of this was and how efficient it was. Plus, we also like to feedback ourselves. And finally, I will include Tony's contact details in that for you as well. So if anyone has any questions, please, we've got a couple of minutes left if you'd like to jump in. Yep. 
and Trevor, if you don't mind, if we, I'm, I'm happy to send this slide out to everybody too. If they want to have this as a, 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 a as a presentation in a PDF form, feel free to send it out too as well. Excellent, thanks, Tony. I think I can see. Um, I'm gonna. I, I'm gonna. I can see some messages come through. Let me just have a look. I'll just. Uh, there, I've got some messages come through. Here they are. Oh, me and Techno, who it is. There's some questions here. I've got some, I, won't, I won't mention any names uh, to everybody. Um, uh, one of the questions I've got here is um, about inventory. I, 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 again, I, and the, I won't, the question's about obviously turnover. I think we've, we've touched on this, but again, got, uh, what I will say to, 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 to this question is, yes, it is important to constantly review uh, your, your inventory levels. Don't get fixated, guys. Just have a, you know, once a month, have a look, gaze around your warehouse or your shop and just see what's moving. You know, if there's dust gathering on the shelves, well then you know that there's an issue there or whatever, but but don't get too fixated. I don't want to send out the wrong message about getting fixated. It's just more about making sure you're on top of what's moving and if it's not moving, get on top of it and just move it out, uh, you know, in, in the most sort of positive way possible. Um, and that's that. That's 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 pretty much it for me. Um, uh, Trevor, is there any other Excellent. questions? Good, uh, Tony. I'll thank you. Uh, thank you again so much for today's presentation, folks. As I said, please keep an eye out for that email, which will have the uh, the link to the recording for today. It'll have uh, the survey form we'd like you to fill out. On behalf of everyone here, Tony, thank you very much for your time.